Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Home Assistant Green that we just, just received. Um, I had ordered a, I don't know, a month or two ago, and we just received it this week. And I'm looking to get this set up and hopefully streamline a lot of the, you know, devices within our home after six years or so. We have a lot of devices, a lot of different hubs, and I'm really looking to move away from that. Um, you know, trying to integrate things into Home Assistant. Hopefully we're going to have a more local, more reliable um, backbone to our system that we can connect with the user interfaces that we so desire. So I think it's going to be, you know, a good project. And um, we're going to go ahead and get this opened up today and get this set up. And I'll walk you through that process and let you see what that looks like. Um, you know, starting with the, uh, the box here and um, moving to the complete install. So without further ado, here we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and open the box now. Let's open and see what we have inside. We have powered by Home Assistant. Home Assistant green information. And that's just the QR codes for the downloads and the information regarding what's um, featured on this version of it. The warranty and safety information, certainly don't need that. And then we have the unit is the next item that I come to. Let me get this opened up. This feels pretty solid. Um, definitely a large heat sink here. Nice metal. Um, bottom with the clear um, translucent plastic on top and we have the ethernet the micro sd card slot we have the hdmi there's two usb a and then we have the power port so again it's a uh, pretty compact you know it's about the size of my hand give or take and um, really really solid actually um, not what I was expecting out of this hub. <laughs> I thought it'd be really lightweight and um, not much to it. So we're going to open it up and we have the Ethernet cable here. That's pretty standard. And then this box is labeled, pow labeled power supply, which is the missing item so far. So let's see what we have in here. Let's slide this out on the table. It's definitely several pieces. So they have all the different connections depending on your power supply you have. So we're in the US, so all of these can go with the warranty and safety information and we can attach the standard US outlet. And it just pops on and twists and locks in place. And it looks like there's a release right here if you needed to change that. But again, we're in the US, so that's good to go. Makes it look a little bit funky on the power adapter here, um, but it's fine. It's going to be hidden in the in the uh, server closet anyway, with all of the other um, you know boxes and switches and um, you know everything else we have there. So pretty pretty easy setup it appears. I'm going to go ahead and open up. We also got the Home Assistant Sky Connect. Um, and I'm looking at what I want to use for Z-Wave too, because we do have some Z-Wave devices. But the, the Home Assistant Sky Connect, um, this is utilized for the Zigbee and uh, Thread in the future um, for Matter. So that's that's why we bought this one. And it's um, reminding you to use the extension cable on the USB-A to connect the Sky Connect. And it says that minimizes the interference from the uh, USB port. So this is just a little thumb drive, super tiny. Um, and we have just a USB extension. So that's pretty straightforward. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is we'll connect this in and be able to mount this um, up on the wall to get better reception our devices so maybe sit this on the shelf and mount the uh, sky connect up on the wall with just some 3m tape um, to hold it hold it steady up there 
So that looks like that'll be pretty easy and uh, pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and start the um, installation for the uh, home assistant. It's supposed to come pre-configured, pre-loaded. So I'm going to walk through the instructions and, and let you know how that goes. And I'll walk through the process as well as getting some of our, our devices added and um, you know the initial setup of the home assistant here with the home assistant green. I think it's going to be a really exciting time. Like I said, I, my goal is to have this be the backbone of our uh, our smart home here and uh, you know really drive what I believe a smart home should be, which means that it's doing the automations and we might not even notice when it's doing them, but we would certainly notice when it didn't do them. Um, and, and a quick example that I always have of that is when I travel for work, uh, a lot of times I'm in a hotel and I'll walk in in the uh, the bathroom or the hotel room and not even try to hit the light switches because I'm just so used to the light switches reacting to the fact that I'm there and turning on and off as needed rather than me having to control them. So it's one of those things that I don't really notice that much when I'm home, but once I'm out and somewhere else that I need to operate those in, in that situation, um, you know, it's pretty apparent to me how, how uh, you know, how much automation is, you know, embracing what I need and knowing what I need when I need it and just doing it for me. So it's really a, a great setup. And that, again, that's what I think home automation should be. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get this set up. And I'll show you what that looks like. We have the Eero, the T-Mobile Home Internet, Smart Things, Lutron, M2 and this space reserved for Home Assistant. So let's get this connected. Now you can see we have it hooked up and power to the unit and the lights are indicating that it's um, booting up and working. I'm going to move over here to the installation of the app and the setup throughout the app. I used the standard iPad for the installation, and you can see it installs relatively quickly. And once it does, I'm able to open the app, and it immediately recognizes the Home Assistant green and identifies where it's at on our network and begins the um, initial, initialization uh, process of Home Assistant. The 20 minute estimate was actually relatively accurate for the install and then we were able to go ahead and enter the installation and enter our credentials here to set everything up i'm going to skip through that and we were able to enter our home location again i'm going to bypass that section um, for privacy purposes and then it goes ahead and asks about some permissions which i opted out of in this instance and then we proceeded with the installation. So found the compatible devices at this point, and we were able to set up a lot of those devices pretty quickly and easily, and I'll walk through some of those next. I'll navigate into the discovered devices here, and as you can see, there's a lot of devices that's got discovered, but before we get into the configuration of those, I actually went ahead and installed the Nabucasa um, App cloud integration for Home Assistant as we like to utilize things through the app and even when we're not home. And with some of the cloud integrations, it's a requirement as well. So I'll work through that first here. And you can see that we entered our username and password to create the account and moved over to their website and completed the registration process. And for privacy purposes, I'm gonna skip over some of that information here. We'll move back to the installation and configuration. One of the easiest integrations is the iRobot integration. So you click the configure button and then you go to the robot and physically um, press a button on that and it configures it extremely easily. It's it's really a, a great setup for that. So definitely an easy integration there. The next integration that I did is my absolute favorite smart home products, 
the Lutron Cassetta switches. Um, so you push the configuration button here, and you physically pushed a button on the back of the um, Lutron Cassetta hub, and immediately it pairs everything together, all local connections, and brings in all the devices. And the real bonus to the Lutron Cassetta integration with Home Assistant is that it actually exposes all of the buttons on the Pico remotes. And I found it uh, made a lot of sense to um, disengage those from working with a particular switch and allow Home Assistant access to all the buttons and allow it to determine what each of the buttons do. So that's really a great integration. And again, some of my favorite smart home products there. For me, the elephant in the room was moving over nearly 80 of the Z-Wave and Zigbee devices from SmartThings into Home Assistant. So here you can see the dongles that I have on the extensions hanging on the wall. And we'll move over here and you can see the integration of the devices into Home Assistant. For each device, I had to go into Samsung SmartThings and delete that device, you know, exclude it from the SmartThings network so that it was available to integrate into Home Assistant. Several of the devices took many tries to get them out of uh, SmartThings, and I had to go, you know, around the app and on occasion and delete the, um, the uh, devices directly in the back end on the web-based version of SmartThings. So it was definitely a cumbersome pro process that, that took me a good bit of time for all those devices, but certainly in the end, it's well worth it to move everything over into Home Assistant. Next, I installed Hacks, which is the Home Assistant community store. Um, it has a lot of other integrations um, included in it that are not in the uh, official integrated integrations uh, section of Home Assistant. Once I had Hacks installed, I installed the Alarmo um, security alarm system set up within Home Assistant, which I'm really pleased with how the um, Alarmo uh, security alarm works. It's pretty intuitive, simple, and has all the features that, that you'd expect in a security alarm system within a smart home uh, hub. So definitely recommend the Alarmo as an option here. Uh, and that integrates well with uh, all of our other devices that we have and um, even communicating across over, for example, to um, Apple HomeKit as well. So definitely recommend that one. Speaking of Apple, I integrated the Apple TV 4K into Home Assistant as well. Finally, in our initial setup came the voice assistants. So we actually have several different um, options within our household. So I did integrate the Amazon version, um, Miss A as some folks refer to her as. Um, so that that is integrated and it's actually been really useful for us because it has some better integration for certain um, integrations like wise cameras, for example, um, I like that it passes through the doorbell ring natively into um, the Amazon assistant. In addition to the Amazon assistant, we did install the Google assistant as well so that's uh it's actually the primary voice assistant within our household we have approximately i would say 10 or so of the google home assistants and we probably have uh, maybe just a couple of the amazon assistants so definitely um, a google household for that purpose but we like to have all of them around. They all have their own purposes and the, their own things they do um, best and their own integrations. So I hope you enjoyed this video of the initial setup of the Home Assistant within our house and moving over from Samsung SmartThings. Please remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss the future content. Thank you.